Summer on the patio by the lake is simply the best. Just need a nice place to sit. Wait, what? No, definitely not. This won't do. Hang on a sec here. Ah, much better. This is what we'll be modeling and texturing in this video. We'll focus on modeling with precise measurements, then using the power of modifiers to ease the pain and speed up the workflow. And then we'll reuse some objects and modify them to build other parts. And finally, we'll texture everything and manipulate the UVs a bit to make it look good. Here we go. So I'm going to delete my existing patio set and hide everything else that is in the scene switch over to solid view and we are going to start from scratch. So let's add a new collection here and we're going to call this table and make a sub collection and call it wood. And with that collection active, we're going to shift a add a cube, which is going to be our table leg. And first thing I want to do is bring the object origin to the bottom of the leg. And I do that by going to edit mode and hitting G Z. 1000 and it's got to be 1000 because if we check my scene tab here i'm working in millimeters so let's give that the foot dimensions which is going to be 140 by 89 by 812. all right so now we size this in object mode and our scale is out of whack completely here so we're going to control a and apply the scale that is very important, it's the most important when working precisely in Blender. The scale needs to be applied because we're going to use our advanced mode to let Blender calculate dimensions, which needs the scale to be unified at one. And same goes for modifiers and stuff like that. So make sure you apply the scale. So now we need to position this foot on one corner of the table. So we're going to hit GX and we're going to go into advanced mode by hitting equal. And that opens up a little bracket up here. And now we can let Blender calculate stuff for us. Because we're going to go negative on the negative side of the X axis. I'm going to go minus 2135, which is the total measurement of what the total length of the table, I should say. So we need half of that. So divide it by two. And now we got to add to that half the width of the foot. So plus 70. Same thing on the Y axis, G Y equal for advanced mode, minus 914 divided by two, plus the thickness of the foot divided by two. So 89 divided by two. And that gives us our position. Now we need that foot on all four corners. And this is where we make use of Blender's modifier system, which gives us the power to have duplicates of this foot without actual geometry and without duplicating it or without uh, remodeling it and repositioning it. We can let Blender do the work for us. And that saves us time and effort in the long run. So we're going to go under our little wrench icon here, add modifier, generate mirror. And we want to mirror it on the X axis and on the Y axis. So we're going to toggle both of them, but nothing happens yet because Blender mirrors around the object origin. But we can also tell it to mirror around one specific object. So with the 3D cursor at the world origin, we're going to shift A at an empty. And I'm going to use plane axis and I'm going to call this table master. I'm going to bring this into the main table collection here. And this is going to control everything and we're going to use it later to move everything around too. So back on our leg in the mirror modifier, we're going to use this as the mirror object. And suddenly we have four legs with the perfect dimensions overall. All right, let's call this legs and shift A add another cube. And this is going to be, uh, what was the measurement? I think it was 146 by 914 by 38. Let's apply the scale right away so we don't forget about that. And activate vertex snapping. And then we can hit G, B, 
to define our snap base. And I want to grab this corner down here and snap it to there. All right, so now we have one plank in place. Now we need a whole bunch more to fill up the whole table. And again, we make use of the modifier system to save us a lot of work and a lot of time. So with this selected, we're gonna go on the modifiers and add an array modifier. And because we walk, we're working with precise dimensions, we're gonna turn off relative offset and switch to constant offset. And if I zero that out, it's just basically making a duplicate right on top of the other. And we know we have a dimension of 146 on the X axis. So if I type in 146, it basically places the duplicate right next to it. Now, the good thing for you is I already did the math for it. And I know it's gonna be 14 planks with a gap of seven millimeters in between. So we're just gonna add seven millimeters to the array offset. So we can just type in plus seven and there's our plank and it's gonna be 14. If I hold down shift, it's gonna be slower. And 14 gives us the perfect amount of planks with the perfect distance to fill up the whole table. So now we can also put a bevel modifier on there, generate a bevel. And let's move that all the way to the top. Give it two millimeters, four segments, and shade it smooth. And because we're going from a rounded surface to a flat surface, what we can do is we can activate hardened normals and then watch what happens here. And see the difference in shading. Because when you shade something smooth, Blender is trying to average out the normals. And when you come from a rounded surface to a flat surface, it basically tries to almost bend the flat surface so it has an average between the normals. And this hardened normal will almost act like you mark this edge as sharp without actually doing it, but it'll straighten out that normal in that position. And now we can select our planks up here, shift select our, lang, pl uh, our leg, and under the bevel menu, or bevel, bevel modifier, we can go on the drop down menu and copy to select it. And that basically is already the table. Now we need a frame for it. So let's make a new collection under our table here and call this frame. And with that collection active, we're gonna add another cube. And we're going to make this 2083 by 736 by 58. And you see it fits right in between there. And now we're gonna apply our scale. Can't say that often enough, apply the scale. Now, let's switch into edit mode, face select, and select these two faces and hit I to inset and type 25. I'm not sure why screencast keys sometimes just doesn't catch it, but I try to say it as much as I can. Now, on our inset options menu here on the bottom left, we want to make sure that offset even is toggled on. That way we make sure that all these faces are exactly 25 millimeters wide. And then with these two faces still selected, we can right click and bridge the faces. All right, let's switch over to face snapping and GZ, hover over that face and bring it all the way up. And then we gotta bring it six millimeters back down. So GZ six minus, because there's gonna be plates over top of it. Now let's get the uh, wood out of the way for a sec here. And this is gonna be our frame table. Shift A, add another cube. It's going to be 102 by 210 by 6. That doesn't look right. 6, 210. That's better. All right. So we want to bring this up to this corner here. So again, switch over to vertex snapping. G, B. Grab this inside corner there and snap it up here. And again, we're going to apply our scale before we do anything else with it. And we are going to apply a bevel modifier with a one millimeter, four segments, and we're gonna harden our normals and shade smooth. And then we're gonna apply that 
to our frame two by copying it to the selected again. And we're going to add another mirror modifier to bring this plate to all four corners. So do we have to add it again and set it up again? No, we don't. We can just bring our legs back and then we still have, we should have the plates uh, selected. And then we're gonna shift select the leg and then copy the mirror modifier over. So now if we get the wood out of the way again, we have four plates on all corners. So now we need plates on the top. Those are the plates legs. So we're gonna add another cube and we're gonna make this 2083, 102, six. And again, we're gonna GB, grab the bottom corner, snap it up here. And now because we have a bevel on there, it might not snap correctly. So we can turn the bevel off temporarily. GB, grab this corner again and snap it up there. And then we can turn the bevel back on. And then we're also gonna copy it over to this one. And right now we don't see it yet because we have not applied the scale yet. So control A, scale. And there we go. So now we need to copy this one over to the other side too. So we're gonna shift select the plates, bring over the mirror modifier, copy to select it. Only this time, if we select the top plates, we don't need the X axis because the plate is already going end to end. So now we need a bunch of holes in the plates and in the tops where screws would go through. So let's go into front view and start with the plates. Now with that plate selected, I'm gonna go into edge select. I'm gonna hit control R, hover over the bottom edge, and I'm gonna scroll my mouse wheel up twice. So I have three loop cuts and I'm just gonna right click to cancel the movement. And I'm gonna hit R, control R again and hover over the other edge, scroll up once, left click, and I'm just gonna move this down a little bit. So it sits basically with the same distance from here to there as to from the bottom to the first loop cut. And we're, and we're gonna use these lines as guides for our hole cuts. Now, let's go into side view again. Uh, vertex select and select this vertex and shift S cursor to vert or cursor to selected and back into object mode. Now we can shift A at a cylinder and we only need like 12 vertices for it. Technically, it's not even gonna be visible in the final render, so it doesn't have to be high poly at all. And we're gonna give this a radius of 6.5 millimeters for a 13 millimeter hole and make this like 50 millimeter high. And we're gonna rotate it on the X axis by 90 degrees. So now we have this nice cylinder right going through there. And I'm going to go into X-ray mode. I'm still in vertex snapping, but I wanna snap with the center this time instead of the closest. And then I'm gonna go into vertex select, select everything, and I wanna snap it over to this corner. But because I'm in, in wireframe mode and X-ray mode, it can happen that I snap to one of the vertices back there. So I'm just gonna constrain it to one axis. So I'm gonna hit shift D, X and hover over this vertex to snap it there. And then I can box select everything, shift D again, this time on the Z axis and snap to one of the vertices down here. So it's still one object, one cutter object, but we have four cylinders that we can use to cut a hole. Now for the next step, we need a blender add-on, which is included, but not necessarily active. So we'll just go on to preferences, add-ons and look for bool tool and activate that. And then we can just take our cutter object here. Before we do anything, I'm gonna hit M to move it to a new collection, call it cutters. And then we shift select the plate and hit control numpad minus. That cuts a nice quartet of holes into our plate, but we also wanna have these on the other four plates or the other three plates. And we can get there by just moving 
the modifier up because it is important which order we have on the modifier stack. So if I move this all the way up, I get the, the holes uh, transferred to all the other plates. Now, I don't see the bevel right now. Since I cut the hole in there, the bevel does not work anymore. And that, um, that has something to do with our guidelines here. Now, the reason why I want to keep guidelines, I can get rid of these here, control X to dissolve them. I want to keep these because whenever you cut a hole in a mesh, every hole needs at least two connection points to the out, outer geometry of, of your mesh. And if you don't provide the Boolean modifier with support edges already, it just arbitrarily gives you edges. And that can get very, very messy. So that's why I like to keep these two edges. But if we switch to wireframe mode, front select, and we can turn on the Boolean modifier in edit mode so we can see our holes. Now, if we alt select and alt shift select these two edges and scale them on the X axis slowly, then we can see our bevel modifier reappear. And every hole still has two connections. And now all the plates have the bevel working again and even the holes have the bevel. All right. Now we need a similar thing on the top here, but we have to work with two Boolean objects because if I bring my wood back and go into wireframe mode, the two holes on the first board are gonna be a little off center because the frame is in the way. It's just the way it worked out. So I'm gonna take my top plate, go into edit mode and hit control R to add one loop cut. I'm just gonna move it so it's roughly in the middle between this edge and the frame. Again, we're going to use this as our guideline and our support edge for the booleans. Now, back into object mode, and we've got to add another cylinder. And before I move it, I'm going to change the size a little because these holes are going to be a little smaller. So let's change this to five. 0.5 and I'm also going to move that cylinder into the cutters and I'm going to call it, actually name it so we know what is what. So we're going to call this holds top outer. That way we know it's going to be the outer outer edges. And then we're going to switch the snapping mode to edge and move this to the center of this edge here or move the center to this edge. And I'm just gonna move this along the X axis to about there. And with the vertex, in the in vertex mode, hit shift D, X, and move it about 50 millimeters over. So it's already in there because we snapped it to it with the center. And now we can get the wood out of the way for a sec. Shift select the plates and copy the uh, mirror modifier over. And that way we have those ones in place already. Now we need the cutters for the rest. So let's go back into top view, bring the wood back, select the cutter objects in edit mode, take one of these holes, shift D to duplicate, move it along on the X. And then we're gonna hit P to separate the selection. So now I need another guideline. So I'm gonna select my planks here go into edit mode and make one loop cut right down the center, which is going to transfer to all the other ones too. So now I can go back to my cutter object here and I'm going to need my origin, which is still over here because we moved everything in object uh, in edit mode. I got to bring it back to all of this. So I'm going to shift S, bring the cursor to it. And in object mode, I'm going to hit object, set origin to 3D cursor. Now, while I'm still in object mode, I'm going to snap it with its center right to this little basically crosshair where the two lines cross. So G, hold control and snap it right there. And then I'm going to switch over to edit mode because I want the, the, uh, the origin to remain there. So I'm going to hit GX 35 minus 
And I'm gonna hit Shift D X 70. So now I have them evenly spaced right from the center of the plank. Now I can go back into object mode and I just gotta bring them down a little. So G Z. So they roughly line up with the other ones. It's not that important. As long as they go right through the top plate, it's all fine. So now we can shift select the planks and copy over the array modifier. Again, you see that with reusing and just using modifiers, we can get a lot of stuff done very quickly without having to remodel stuff all the time. So let's get the planks out of the way and reactivate these cylinders. And what we don't need on these is to have it mirrored on the X axis. So we can turn that off. And we also can decrease the count to 12 because on the outer planks, we already have our Boolean object. So let's bring this to 12. And then we can shift select the other Boolean cutter and shift select the plate to make that the active ob object and control numpad minus. And we're just gonna call this the inner cutters. And we should also rename the other one, which is the, the holds for the plates. All right, now we have our holds set up, we have our plate set up and everything. The frame is basically done. Now all we gotta do is get some hardware and to cover the holds with some screw heads. So I'm gonna get the cutters out of the way for the time being. I'm gonna go back into front view. And I'm just going to place my cursor, shift, right click somewhere on the center of this, this hole here. So now we're going to use one more add-on that's already in built into Blender. And that is the Bolt Factory. So if you search for Bolt, you have Mesh Bolt Factory. And that gives us a lot of uh, options of adding just screws and bolts and stuff. So let's make one more collection here and call that Hardware. And we're gonna shift a mesh bolt. And these are out of the box humongous. It's like something out of King Kong's toolbox or something. <laughs> the problem here is, and it's been like that for years and years, uh, there is a bug with the uh, unit scale. So we would have to go in and change the unit scale here in order to get them in, into, in the right size but that would also affect everything else we have in the scene and we don't want that. So I'm just gonna leave it like that and scale them to what I need. Now, we have a couple of presets here and we're just gonna choose M12 here, which makes it even bigger. Like the first one was King Kong's baby and this is now daddy King Kong. Uh, we're gonna leave it at bold. We don't need a bit on these ones. It's gonna be a hex head. So all this is perfectly fine. And now we're just gonna hit S to scale and scale it down, scale it down till we have it at the right size. And we're gonna rotate it on the X axis by minus 90 degrees. And in front view, now we can scale it back up. So we, until we see that the, uh, the thread basically fits snugly into that hole, and we can also reposition it a little more centered. Now, what we don't need is the shaft and the thread. So I'm just gonna go into vertex select, select all of these, and I'm gonna hit control numpad plus to expand my selection to this last little ring here. I'm just gonna go into view and decrease the clip start to one millimeter. That way I can get closer to it. I'm just gonna X delete those vertices select this edge loop and merge at center. Now I'm gonna control number pad plus twice to expand my selection. I'm gonna hit Y to basically split that off the main mesh. So if I move it around now, I can do that, but it copy, it makes a copy of all the vertices where it basically connects. So now I can just scale that up until I have a nice little washer and I can alt select this edge loop and F to fill. 
Now I just gotta make this a little thicker. I'm gonna select this vertex, control number pad plus to expand the selection. And when I hit G Y to make this a little thicker, we can also turn on the edge length so we can see how long it's gonna be. But again, there is an, an issue with the unit scale. First and foremost, we gotta apply the scale. And then if we look at the unit scale, it's off by a decimal. So if we GY that over and want to have a three millimeter edge here, and where it says it's three millimeters, there's a decimal error. So we got to bring it to 0.3 something. With powder coating, it's a little over a three millimeter. So that should be fine. So let's shade this smooth and throw on a bevel modifier, generate bevel. And I'm going to give this 0.3 of a millimeter. And that should be fine. Now, all we got to do is bring the origin to these faces here so we can snap properly, because right now the origin is right there at the cursor. So let's select the one vertex in the middle here, cursor to vert, and in object mode, object, origin, origin to 3D cursor. Now. G, Y, snap it to that face, and we're golden. Now I switch back to front view, and in edit mode, select everything. Let's turn off the edge length, we don't need that anymore. Shift E, X, just like we did with the holes, and just move it to cover it. Box select everything, Shift E, Z, and cover everything. This is all you're going to see. So if it's a little off center from the hole, that's not that important. Even if you, once you put the leg bolts in, they're never a hundred percent in the center. They always kind of twist and shift a little, but that's perfectly fine. Now we're going to shift select the plates and copy the mirror modifier over. And that way we have them on all the other ones too, just like that. Now we just need some screws on all the other holes. And before we do that, we're gonna move our, uh, our Boolean modifiers all the way to the top here. And then we have to move that supporting edge again. So we're just gonna turn on the Booleans in edit mode. GG to edge slide, and they're just gonna slide them down till we see our bevel reappear. All right, so let's bring in the cursor there and shift A, bolt. And again, it's giant, and we're gonna switch over the hex, uh, the bit type to Ellen, and the head from hex to pan. So let's scale it down, scale it down, and rotate it on the X by 180. Go into wireframe, and keep scaling till we can tell that it's gonna fit through a hole. We can also bring it up scale it just a hair more maybe center it a little more and that's gonna be fine and again we don't need the shaft or the thread so let's delete all these vertices and delete this ring too actually just let's just select these two hit y that way we have them basically separated from the mesh. Scale them on everything but the Z-axis and hit F to fill. Now we can select this edge loop, Shift S, bring the cursor there, and in object mode, set the origin there. No, our origin to 3D cursor. And we can shade that smooth. And GZ, bring it up to that face. All right, now we can select everything. And just like we did before, Shift DX, bring it over here. And we can bring our cutters back. Actually, we can just copy it from the plate. So let's Shift select the plate and copy over the mirror. And then make one more copy of these move it on X over to these holes, Shift D, X, bring it over to that hole, 
and we're going to select these two P separate the selection. So now we can take these two and we got to bring the origin right in between these two here. So we're going to go into local view, vertex select, select these two vertices, shift S cursor to vert. That's going to place the cursor right in between there. And in object mode, set the origin to the 3D cursor. Out of local view. And now we bring back the cutter object because I want to shift select this cutter object, the inner. And I want to bring in the array modifier. And I want to bring in the mirror modifier. Let's apply the scale. And we also need to apply the rotation. And we can get rid of the X value on the mirror modifier. All right, there's our frame. Let's bring back our wood. And now what we got to do in the feet here is make a notch for the plates. So go into edit mode, make a loop cut on the horizontal, bring that up. I'm going to snap it to that face. And then I'm just going to bring in two loop cuts on the vertical. Alt select this one and bring it over to this face, GX. Alt select this one, GX, bring it to that face. Then I'm gonna switch over to face select and bring this one back by Alt E, extrude manifold. And I need six millimeters on the negative. And we might have to deactivate clamp overlap here on the bevel modifier for that to work. And just like that, we have our table. Now we just need to prep the UV unwrap already. So when we copy everything over to the benches, which is going to be a lot faster than the table, um, where we already have that in place. Now let's start with the planks. Go into edge mode and control X, delete the center edge. And instead we're going to control R, make a whole bunch more. So I'm going to scroll up my mouse wheel to make 20 cuts. And we see that on the bottom left corner here, down here, that I have 20 cuts. And now I just select, select sharp edges. And I'm going to shift deselect these three edges here. And if we go into x-ray mode, you see that one is still selected. I'm going to right click and mark them as the seam. Mark seam, not clear seam. And go into face select all, A to select everything, U and unwrap that. And everything else we do once we have the texture on. So let's go onto our leg here and do the same thing. Edge select, select, select sharp edges. And I just wanna Alt Shift deselect three of them, three most visible ones. And I'm going to right click, mark seam, go into face select, A to select everything, U, unwrap. All right. So our table is built. Now we just, if we try to move something, everything is going to move as its individual piece. So we're going to parent everything to our table master. So then we can use the table master to move everything around. And the easiest way to do this is up here, we just shift select everything. And then while holding shift, we drag, click and drag everything onto the table master. It's gonna take a second to calculate. And now everything's moving around with it. And at this point, I would go ahead, apply my Boolean modifiers, because I know that's where I need the holes to be. And moving stuff around with Boolean modifiers slows down the viewport quite a bit. So I would go into my plates and just hover over the, uh, the Boolean modifiers and just control A. Same on these ones here, control A, control A. And that way, when I start moving things around now, it's a lot more smooth in the viewport. And I just know that the holes will not change anymore. So I can leave them in place. So let's move on to our benches. Now that we have the table built, let's make a new collection. We're going to bring this up one and call that benches. And we're going to reuse a, quite a bit of what we already have so we don't have to build it again. 
So let's take a leg first and we're going to hit Shift D to duplicate it. And I'm going to move it into my benches and collapse some of these collections here. And within there, I'm also going to make a new collection called wood, just like we did with the table. I'm going to get those legs out of the way. So I only have the bench legs available right now. I'm going to select everything on the top here. And again, I'm going to make use of the advanced mode to let Blender calculate what I need. So I'm going to hit G Z equal minus 812 to basically bring the top all the way down to the bottom. And then I want my feet to be, let me just check this here, plus 462. And just like that, I already have my table legs. So now what we got to do is reposition these feet. So the easiest way to do this is to just hit Alt G to reset the uh, position of them. And then because we're still in face snapping, we just got to make sure we switch over to closest if we are still on center. And then we can just G X and hover over this face to bring it right back lining up here. And now we got to bring this whole bench to a total width of 5, 458. So again, we are going to use the advanced mode. So hit G Y equal minus 558 divided by two plus 89 divided by two. And now we have 458 width. Now what we can do is we can take our plate and our bolts and hit shift D and they are going to be in the frame. So we're gonna make another collection here under our bench called frame. And we are going to take these bolts, doesn't matter if, which one it is, and the plates and move them down into the frame. And there should be another collection called hardware. Sorry, this is a little confusing right now. My apologies for that. All right, so let's take this plate, shift select this or control select this bolt in the collections here. And then we're just gonna GZ hover over this one, over this bottom face here. And then we can also GY bring this in and GY snap to that face. And that way we already have everything here in place. Now we just gotta select all these pieces and Alt P to clear the original parent. And I'm gonna get the table master out of the way. I'm gonna Shift A, add another empty. I'm gonna bring this in the main benches collection here. And I'm gonna call this bench master. So now I'm gonna take all these here, shift select the bench master, control P and parent them to that. And I also gotta go through my mirror modifiers here and change the mirror object on those. From table master to bench master. All right. Now what we got to do is take one of these or take the planks, which aren't called planks. So let's call them planks table, shifty to duplicate them. And I'm going to move them down into my wood collection and call them planks benches. So now I can basically get all of the table collections out of the way. I can also get the cutters out of the way for the time being. And I'm gonna deactivate the array modifier for, for now. Alt P to clear the parent. I'm gonna rotate it on the Z by 90. And now I gotta move this in place here. And because I've got face snapping activated, I'm just gonna snap it to the faces quickly. So G, Z there, G, Y there, and G, X over here. Now, go into vertex select. I'm gonna select everything at the end here. And before I start moving them, I want to make sure that on the top right here under options, I have correct face attributes toggled on. That way, when I start moving the vertices, they don't stretch the UVs out and I can keep a clean texture. So G, X and snap it over here. And I'm also going to object set the origin to the geometry. So now if I toggle on the array modifier again, I only need three this time and I got to bring up the uh, distance to 156. I can 
keep it on the x-axis because they're rotated by 90 degrees. I could also apply the rotation and I would have to switch it over to Y, but that's okay. I can deal with that. Alrighty. Now we can also parent that to our bench master and we don't have a mirror modifier on it. So we're fine there. So now all we got to do is finish off the frame for the bench. So let's get the wood out of the way for now. And we're going to activate the frame collection and shift a add a cube and we are going to make this 2083 like before and these ones are going to be let me just grab my measurements here 268 and 58 high apply the scale gz snap it to the top here and it appears i must have written something else down all right, let's just select all these vertices and just snap them to those faces. Fair enough. Again, we have the scale applied. We do the same thing as we did before. We're going to take these faces, inset, 25, right click and bridge faces. So now we need a couple plates on here for the bench planks, but they're going to be going in the other direction. So let's shift a cube, make this six mil high. And on the Y, it's going to be 102. And on the X axis, they're going to be 406. All right, let's G snap it. Just snap it in place up here. GZ6. And I want to bring this in by 117 millimeters. So GX117. And now I need another array modifier on there. I'm gonna bring this back and apply my scale before I do that. So GX117. And then I'm gonna bring my array modifier on there. Again, we're gonna use the constant offset and it's gonna be 437. And we're gonna bring the count up to five. So now the last thing we need to do is bring in uh, another cutter object so let's shift a add a cylinder and move this into the cutter collection and it's going to add it right over there so let's move it here for the time being and like we did before i'm going to add one loop cut down the middle and we're going back into center select and edge snapping g snap it right there and we're going to bring the wood collection back for the benches. So now we just bring it along the Y axis into position. So let's stay in vertex select and G Y and bring it past the frame. Shift D Y to bring it all the way over here by 100. Mm, no, 80. Duplicate it one more time. Move it on the Y axis to over here. And so now in order to have the same thing on the other side, I'm just gonna place my cursor on the axis here, right there. And I'm gonna switch my pivot point to 3D cursor. And with everything selected, Shift D, cancel everything, and then R180. And that brings it over and we'll just have a nice whole pattern right there. And now we can Shift select those plates and copy that array modifier to bring them into everything else and control numpad minus to make the holes. Now here again, I can apply my Boolean modifier right away because I know the holes are gonna be in place. So I'm just gonna hover over it and control A and can get all my cutters out of the way. And I'm gonna parent that to our benches master too. And I'm gonna shift select the frame, shift select these plays plates and copy the bevel modifier to the selection and on these ones here i might have to go a and merge by distance because we had a double vertex where the boolean was and that way the bevel gets applied correctly now all we got to do is get a another screw head there so i'm going to bring back the hardware here and i'm going to select one of these here go into vertex select grab me one of those Shift D 
I'm just gonna hit Z to bring it down and P to separate the selection. And back in object mode, I'm gonna select this one here and bring it down to my hardware for the benches. Those out of the way again. And I can get rid of, actually, I'm just gonna deactivate that. No, I'm just gonna get rid of it. I'm also gonna get rid of the mirror modifiers on here. So I am just gonna get this in place over one of these holes. And I'm gonna select this face, bring my cursor there so I can move the origin for the object right there to the 3D cursor. And then face select, make sure I have closest and face activated and GZ snap it right to it. And then in vertex mode with everything selected, I'm just gonna shift D Y and bring them over shift D Y just so they are on the holes G Y. And again, I can bring the 3D cursor right there, select all of these shift D cancel the movement R 180. And I'm going to switch my pivot point back to a medium point. And I'm going to tap into the array modifier that I have on the plates and just can copy that over. And just like that, I have the screw heads everywhere too. Shift select the bench master, control P to parent. Make sure I have everything paired to it. I have the bold bold. I have the cube, which is the uh, frame bench. And these should be the plates bench top. So let's just make sure we got everything parented. We got the two bolts, we got the legs, we got the planks, we got the plates, we got those plates, and the frame is not parented yet. Parent that there too. Everything moves with the master. Perfect. Now, we have modeled everything. Perfect. We used a lot of modifiers and copied a lot of modifiers over, so it helps us a lot when we model everything. In the long run, when you, when you don't have to explain everything at the same time, uh, it, it does speed up the workflow a lot. All right, so let's bring everything back. Mm, our legs too. And then we can grab the uh, bench master and just hit GY to move everything over. And now it's time to slap some textures on there. Let's make a quick save here. Just save as, or in my case, save because I want to save the file. Let's texture the frame quickly because that's an easy one. Let's just create a new material. I'm gonna call that black metal, not the music kind. And I'm just gonna bring the color down to about 0.1 should be fine. 0.05 maybe. Let's do 0.05-ish, nice and dark. And bring the roughness down to about, actually we can leave it around 0.5. That's perfectly fine. It's a very simple material, it doesn't take much. Uh, I spray painted it with black paint, so black matte paint. So everything got everything is black. So let's just select all these, all the bolts, all the plates, all the screws. Shift select the frame, control L, link the materials. And then we can do the same thing over here. Just select all the plates, the frame, not the planks but the plates and the bolts. Select the frame over here, control L, link materials. And that way we can quickly move on to the wood. And I use a cedar texture that I found on Megascans, but of course you can use whatever you want. Many great places to get uh, some free wood textures, Polyhaven CG, uh, Ambient CG. Of course, Blender Kit has lots of materials too. But because I had to build this in cedar, I used the cedar texture that I found. Um, let me just find it here on the mega scans and just drop that on there. And because we use UV unwrapped it already, the layout is already pretty good. I just want to bring up the scale a little. So the grain is a little too broad for the cedar that I used. So on this here, I'm just going to grab the mapping node and bring the scale up to four. And that worked pretty well for what I had. Now let's just select all the wood pieces first and then shift select those planks that we already textured. Control L, 
link the materials and then we're almost done already. Now, the only thing I want to do is on here, we would have end grain, but because we're using a PBR texture, because we want to have photorealism and I, I believe that procedural textures, even if they're really, really good, they still look like CG wood and not photorealistic wood. So for, for Acris, I prefer photo scan textures. So let's go into UV editing. And this is the reason why I made all these loop cuts. Let's just select the plank and face select all these here. This is the reason why I made all these loop cuts. Because now, because we have the face grain has usually a, lot, a little more swirly lines on it than the edge grain, which means that is where the, uh, the rings of the wood would curve towards. So over here in our UV editor, we can just select the middle face and then we're going to turn on proportional editing and switch it over to sphere on the fall off. And then we hit GX and then we we'll scroll the mouse wheel up until we see that circle appear. And then we can just drag that out a little till on here we see something that we like, a nice little radius, not too extreme. If we turn off proportional editing and go into vertex select, we can also grab the outer two and move these on the X a little because they didn't get quite involved. Just so it's not too extreme, but you have kind of a nice radius on there. And just select everything and scale it along the X axis to stretch it out and compress everything visually, to compress everything here just to make that grain a lot tighter there. And it's going to copy over to all the other ones. And then we we'll just have to do the same thing over on the bench. And of course, on the other side here too. So face, select all these, select the middle face, O to turn back on proportional editing, GX, bring it over a little. And also just grab these two faces. O to turn off proportional editing, or if you just want to move the vertices, GX, bring them over a little. And we're just going to do the same thing on the benches here. Uh, face select these, GX, O, GX, something like that. And on the other side, select all these. GX. Just make sure you go the same direction as you did on the other side. And now one thing I want to do still to the textures is because we use an array modifier on everything. All the UVs, they all look the same. So we can quickly remedy that in the array modifier on the UVs by just setting the offset to some random value. What I do is just go in it back and forth a couple of times and then just let go in a random position. And that offsets the value. I try to keep them a little, a little more in a distance from each other. And I'm going to do the same thing here on the bench. Maybe go in the other direction. It doesn't really matter which way, and it doesn't have to be a, a, an exact value, but you see that the, the UVs are, are moving quite a bit. And that way you get a little more variation in there. And then we can just take everything here, and Alt D Y, move it over here. Maybe bring this a little closer. And just like that, if we bring our environment back and switch over to cycles, where it actually looks good, we just have to position everything. Close all these and select all the masters. Go into top view maybe and just move them around here a little just so they're in a good position. Let me go into camera view and that looks pretty good. So this is how you can model something with high precision while also using the power of modifiers to speed up the workflow and just copy things from one place to the next and reuse things that you've already done within your process. If any of this was helpful to you, please 
let me know in the comments below and while you're headed down there leave a like and maybe consider subscribing and if you want to know about the latest trends in interior design and how to implement it in blender you gotta watch this video until then thanks so much for watching and i'll see you next time